Do you know the feeling when you lift up a half glass of water but you think it's actually full? The glass shoots up and feels way lighter. Well, this feeling is actually related to a concept known in exercise science as post-activation potentiation. When your body expects to lift a heavy weight, you improve your short-term power and speed on a lighter activity that comes after it. There is interesting research on this topic showing that when you perform heavy back squats at 3 to 5 repetitions before jumping or sprinting, your jump and sprint performance improves. Football players often use this strategy to improve their explosiveness on the pitch by doing squats before a running training. There is now also research showing that we can apply post-activation potentiation to help us boost our strength performance in the gym. One 2020 study found that when trained males perform two repetitions of heavy squats at 90% of their 1 rep max, their squat performance later in the workout at 70% of their 1 rep max improved. Basically, if during your warm-up you build up to one heavy set that is not taken to failure, you will be able to perform better once you reduce the weight a little bit to your normal working set weight. As an example, let's say you bench press 80 kilograms for 12 repetitions, which is then roughly 70% of your 1 rep max. During your warm-up, perform your light warm-up sets at 40 and 60 kilograms for about 3 to 5 reps. But also have one warm-up set at a higher weight, like warming up to 85 kilograms for just 2 repetitions. When you now go back to 80 kilograms and start your first working set, you will notice that the 80 kilograms feels lighter and you will be able to perform more repetitions than usual. In essence, you can potentiate your strength by lifting a heavier weight during your warm-up. The concept of post-activation potentiation works because it allows you to train at power outputs exceeding your normal capabilities. Now, of course, we do need to be more mindful of how we apply our warm-up if we intend to use the concept of post-activation potentiation in our training. If during your warm-up you will perform one heavy set, your warm-up will also take a bit more time. To give you a practical example, this is how I warm up and apply post-activation potentiation during one of my high repetition squat workouts. I first start with a light aerobic activity for about 3-5 to five minutes. After this, I perform two dynamic stretches, leg swings to the front and leg swings to the side. After the leg swings, I perform three squat warm-up sets. One set at 60 kg, another set at 100 kg, and then I move into a 120 kg squat for two repetitions. This 120 kg set can be considered the potentiation set. After the 120 kg squat and about 3 minutes of rest, I will be performing my 3 working sets of 8 repetitions with 100 kg on the back squat. Because I just had 120 kg on my back, the 100 kg back squat will now feel significantly lighter and my performance will benefit from this. Now, to be fair, utilizing post-activation potentiation does come with a time-intensive warm-up. This is why I recommend only using this concept on your main compound exercises like a barbell squat or bench press to keep your workout efficient. Also, it is key to mention that during your one heavy potentiation warm-up set, you do not train to failure. Even though your one warm-up set is heavier than your working weight, you keep the intensity of effort low by performing only two repetitions at about 85 to 90% of your one rep max. This way, you get the feeling of lifting heavier weight in your warm-up without the high fatigue. Now, this concept of post-activation potentiation can also teach us something about how we structure our training in general. Most people start their workout by lifting light weights close to failure and gradually building up to their heaviest set. This is often referred to as traditional pyramid set training in which you ease into lifting heavier weights. But a drawback of this training structure is that the lighter sets at the beginning of your workout will actually fatigue you for the heavier sets coming on later in the training session. If you want to express your maximum strength potential while using heavier weights, it's a good idea to prioritize your heavy sets by performing them first. This is where the training method of reverse pyramid training comes into play in which you prioritize your heaviest sets first and decrease the weight later in your workout. The goal with reverse pyramid training is to spend most of your energy on your heaviest overloading sets at the beginning of the workout. Your lighter sets come later in the session and are considered back off work. Because you start with the heavy sets first and the lighter work comes later in your session, with this training structure you also get the benefits of post-activation potentiation. The heavier sets will make the subsequent lighter sets feel more manageable. Especially for intermediate trainees that have reached the strength plateau, I like to use reverse pyramid training to help boost their strength gains. But like with the potentiation set that I mentioned at the beginning of my video, also with reverse pyramid training, you need to emphasize a proper warm-up. If at the beginning of the workout you immediately lift heavy weights, you need to be prepared for this with good warm-up sets. So if you are looking for a way to quickly boost your strength performance, I just presented two training tools that you can use. 
First, you can try using a potentiation set before a compound exercise. Doing one heavy warm-up set that is not taken to failure allows you to train at power outputs exceeding your normal capabilities. Alternatively, with reverse pyramid training you can also get the benefits from post-activation potentiation. Instead of steadily building up your weights in the training session, place the most challenging sets at the beginning of your workout. This will maximize strength potential and you will experience a performance boost as you gradually reduce the weight. And that was all for today's quick video. I know today's video was a bit more theoretical than usual, but I hope I was able to give you practical examples on how to apply post-activation potentiation in your training for better strength gain. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Also, if you found this video helpful, then leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet, and I look forward to seeing you in that next video.